Well, good morning, family. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, blessed Wednesday because Grammy is having a wonderful, blessed Wednesday. I'm taking you guys on a walk again. I'm having a lot of trouble finding quiet time at home with the new puppy in the house and time to get into Bible study this week. So I'm going to talk to you about making time for the Lord because I have had such a hard time finding that time for the Lord. Now, I've done Testimony Tuesday and I've read my word and I've watched a few Bible scriptures. Hey, there's a quarter. <laughs> Found a quarter. And there's a dime. <laughs> I think the Lord is blessing me this morning. 35 cents. I found walking. I will pick up 35 cents. <laughs> anyway, I have really had time, a hard time, since school started back in the last few weeks, uh, for getting in my Bible, uh, doing my morning prayer. I'm having to go into my office in the morning and read my scripture before it's time to go to work and say a quick prayer, and I don't like that. I like to have that done that's just as that's the most important thing to me I shower every morning some people have a cup of coffee and that's their wake up mine's a shower but mine's a shower the Word of God and praying seeking the face of God before I face the things of the world and I don't know if anybody else has had those troubles this morning of finding the time to spend with the Lord I have you know the Word of God is Jesus in the Bible they call Jesus the Word and it took me a long time to get the revelation and understand that the more word that we put in us the more of Jesus we have in us and the more that we purge out the world I'm gonna change it to this side at that sunlight over there so it's very important I have talked to a lot of people and the first thing I ask is when they're telling me their troubles do you read your word and they'll say well I, I, I try to read my word I try to understand the word but I'm just really struggling with that well, my friend I'm here to tell you if you're not putting on your full armor even if you've got the full armor on and you're not getting the sword you have no way to defeat the enemy you know have no way to conquer the things that come against you through the day the word is your sword when Jesus was in the in the desert in the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 nights the devil came and tempted him now we all know that Jesus had the power to cast the devil out but he did everything he did as an example to us so when the devil came to him and brought temptation upon him he fought him with the Word of God he was being the example he was showing us how to have victory in this life so when we are battled, when we are tormented, when we are beat down, the Word is our weapon. It's our weapon to yield. And I'm going to speak to you this morning. You might just be an overweight wife, grandma, <laughs> almost 50 year old woman like me. But when you have the Word of God in your hand, you are a warrior. You are a warrior in the kingdom for God. And you are slashing demons. You are slashing trials. You are slashing sickness. We are healed by his stripes. But we are made overcomers through the word. So I just want to tell you, it's very important to read your word. It's very important to pray. Seek the face of God every day. Now let's talk about prayer for a minute. 
because I pray and I read my word in the mornings. Somebody's your best friend. You talk to them every day. You tell them about the things that are going on in your life. You know everything about them and they know everything about you. That's what the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Heavenly Father is. They're our best friends. God so loved the world and Jesus died on the cross and the Holy Spirit comforts us and guides us and teaches us. Those are things that we need to draw close near to. We need to be closer to Him that we know what He wants to do through us instantly. We begin to understand the voice of God. It's not going, was that you, God? That's going, yes, Lord. There's a trash truck coming and he's going to go by. I thank God for the trash men, the sanitation workers. Everybody has their, their place to work in the society and we keep our society nice and wonderful. We'll let him go. So, my friends. So, my friends, I want to say it's very important that you seek the face of God in the morning. You talk to him. And I'm not just going telling you to go to him and tell him your troubles. Talk to him about your day. When you're sewing or you're washing dishes, are you doing laundry? It says, pray without ceasing. Do you know the Father loves you? He wants to know you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He does. It took me a long time to realize that. My grandmother used to say, and I love my grandmother, but she would say, God don't got time for that frivolous stuff. You just ask him what you need and then leave him alone. But my grandma missed it. She missed the sweetness of the relationship now she was a godly woman she just didn't have the understanding of the love of God and how he loves us and how he wants to commune with us in the beginning God made man do you know why he made man so that he could commune with them hi there did you get loose today did you get loose today we have a friend he may walk with us for a little while. <laughs> and he may not. And in the cool of the day, he would come and commune with man in the garden. And when Adam fell and Eve fell, he no longer could because he cannot be with sin. But he immediately made a plan to redeem man because he loved him. We have been redeemed. And so now we can commune with God in the cool of the day again. We can go straight to the throne of God. We need no intercessor. Jesus is our path back to God, the Father. So it's very important that we go and talk to God. Do you think that Adam walked in the garden and said, Oh Lord, please help me, help my fruit grow on the trees? And No, Adam had no worries. He had no cares because he laid all of those upon him. God, God took care of him. That's what God wants us to do. He wants to, us to lay our carries and our worries and our troubles upon him and just commune with him this morning. So as I'm out here walking in this beautiful creation that God has created for me, I'm walking in the cool of the morning with the Lord and I'm thanking him for his goodness. I'm thanking him for the word, which is Jesus. And I'm praying that Tomorrow, even if I have to get up 30 minutes early, 30 minutes early, I'm going to have that time at my prayer table. Not in my office, not in any of the other things. It's a busy day this morning. People are out working. That's a good thing. Going to work, taking kids to school. But I need that. And I think, my friend, you need that. You need that prayer time in the morning. You need that um, communion with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit before you have to go out and face the world. 
because today it may be a wonderful day we may skip all day see rainbows <laughs> it may be just a wonderful blessed day but it may be one of those days where you go home you climb in the bed and you put the covers over your head those my friend are the days that you need to have a hold of the father the son and the holy spirit and know that he is with you now i ask you guys for some prayer requests i ask you to pray for uh the people over at the youtube channel Hill hillbilly kitchen she lost her husband to the flu and i thank you guys for praying for that so if you can continue to pray i would be so thankful the fellow that i asked you to pay, pray for was uh patrick we actually call him pj that is one of my baby cousins and uh, he has been diagnosed with leukemia but leukemia is just something that god loves to heal that's what i like to say we were talking about when the whenever the other day when terry and me were talking about the testimony tuesday and she said that her husband knew that god was going to heal him here or he was going to heal him here and i said and i really do feel like this when we get healed here it's just a patching up until the day that we're supposed to go but when god calls us home it's a true ultimate healing now i'm believing for a true healing here on earth because he still has a little boy that just started kindergarten that he needs to see after and he has older he has daughters that still need him in their life none of them are married they need him to walk them down the aisle they need him to be in in their life but i'm believing for a miracle in his life and I felt the Lord say to me that he has a calling on his life and there's a great testimony that's going to come out of this. So if you guys can remember to say a prayer, you can call him PJ. That's what we call him. But he goes by Patrick. And uh, like I said, we're Southern and we all have nicknames. Then the other young lady I had you guys pray for is her name is Veronica. And she is 42 years old. She's been in the hospital, hospital for the last month with uh, coronavirus and uh, they had called the family in there was no hope me and missy joined together and we prayed and fasted and the lord is doing a miracle she's still here they are going to do a trach on her so that she can start to rehabilitate but she's still here the doctor said there's no hope but she's still here I have been seeing God do mighty miracles. He's doing mighty miracles. Now there are a lot of people that are losing their life to coronavirus and we pray for those families. But I just want to give a testimony about the coronavirus, about COVID. Oh, COVID-19 ain't nothing but something that came from the enemy. But you know what? When God and Jesus came down and he took them stripes upon his back, he took the stripes for coronavirus. Yes, he did. Alrighty, you guys, the sun's about to blind me now. I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed Wednesday. I hope I encouraged you today. I didn't really have time to get in my Bible this week to come up with a study for us, to come up with a Word of God. I just kind of had to come out here and just let the Holy Spirit speak through me. So I thought, why don't I talk to them about what I'm going through, about making time for the Lord, making time for the Word, making time to commune with our Father. Alrighty, I'm so glad I had time to commune with you guys this morning. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed Wednesday. I love you. I'm praying for you. We're going to make some cakes over the weekend. I'm not going to eat them. I'm going to give them away. <laughs> I'm not going to eat them. So, me and the Lord's been talking about some things. And uh, I'm going to do some wonderful cooking for you guys. But I'm going to start blessing people in my community with it. Yes, I am. And I don't know if you can hear, but the little bees are still out. And they're, whoo, there went one shooting out. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed day. Love you.